this before, so uh, it's um, somewhat of a humbling thing. Uh, let's see. I do want to hit a couple things. I'm going to kind of throw you off here probably a little bit, Teresa. Um, so uh, don't let me... Um, don't let me hijack, you know, to the point of detriment of your program here. But um, so first things first, um, just check you guys, check your mutes if you haven't already, um, because that'll create feedback as we all know. Second thing is, so I was just kind of looking on um, chat. So I sent a test uh, chat comment out. I'm going to ask a couple questions. So, um, so I'd appreciate um, hearing back from folks. I do see uh, lots and lots of people here who I know very well. Um, let's see, I see Seth Koenig's on, Mary Kate Walsh, Amelia Mayam, uh, my XO, huh, and on her Liberty Day. Wow, that's um, that's some true dedication there, Kate. Uh, Kate Sheeran, Desiree Frame, Jordy Cornell. Um, so if I didn't see, if I didn't call out your name, it's just because you got a phone number on here that, that I didn't recognize. Uh, I also see Amber Lewis on. So, so hi to everybody. Um, I have to say just seeing all the names down here is somewhat humbling as well. Um, lots of, lots of great PAOs and officers. And so, um, so, you know, it's somewhat um, presumptuous of me to kind of think that I'm going to sit before you and tell you something that you don't know, but um, I, I'm happy to talk about what this group wants to talk about today. Uh, so you want to talk about promotion boards? We'll hit promotion boards. Um, you know, the uh, it's, it's um, you know, I probably haven't sat one in about a year, um, but I have sat the uh, 05 board. I've sat the 06 board. Um, I've sat uh, every admin board when uh, when I was detailer. In fact, I was the uh, president of the of the boards um, in a couple occasions. I did sit the very first milestone screening board. I think that's probably changed a bit um, since I sat it, but uh, but I do have some experience there, and um, so I'm happy to talk to you about um, the board, fit reps, whatever you want. Um, so don't feel like you have to. Uh, you know, when, when if we exhaust stuff on the boards, Teresa, I would say let's swap out over whatever the group wants to talk about. Um, I don't want to waste anybody's time. So, so first thing I want to ask the group if you've got access to chat, and if you don't, um, feel free to uh, chime in from your phone. Who has participated in a board before, and in what capacity? All right, so I'm not seeing any chat come we, up. We did get a thumbs up from Jody and I for Commander Cornell, and I did. Uh, she did mention in the beginning that that she also has a lot of experience with the board process and can chime in and help as needed, at least until twelve forty-five. <laughs> okay. All right. So Jody, um, then my question for anybody who had sat a board or participated in a board, maybe as a, as a recorder. Um, so what was your status, Jody? And what could you tell me about it uh, in, I don't know, a minute or less? Sorry, sir, I'm sitting in technical difficulties. Um, so I sat as an 06 board recorder. I've sat Pocker board, sat lat transfer board, ran the OCS board, uh, and worked, uh, was also there for the first uh, milestone board as well. So, um, and really interested since I'll be in zone this time as well too. So pay attention to the community values slide. Know what the community values slide is. Um, know that it's posted right after the zones come out. FY22 is not posted yet. But when you're preparing and looking at your record and, and working anything that you plan to submit, know what those must do's are um, for community values and for merit reorder. Um, if you don't know what merit reorder is, it's the second part of a board where those who are selected go back in uh, to see who is the number one best and fully qualified in our community. That person gets promoted first. Um, if you look at it monetarily wise, if you are the best, that's an extra 10K a year. It usually averages out for 05 or 06, just to go from, you know, September to move up to October. So again, community value slides are very important. Um, and that's, that's where I would uh, hone in on for some of those folks who are getting ready for a board, sir. 
Okay, great. Yeah, I just I've taken myself off mute as well. Anybody else have any comments, thoughts on the board process, or, or has participated in some other capacity? Okay, not hearing anything. So, yeah, Jody, I think you and I have uh, seen each other a couple times down there in Millington. Um, notwithstanding the time when we were stationed there together. So, um, okay. So Jody, feel free to jump in um, if you feel that uh, that I'd leave some context out on, on any of this. Um, the only other thing, Teresa, I wanted to do before you started up with uh, some questions is say this. The, uh, so the board process, um, number one, I would, I would highly encourage every one of you who's on the call um, to, you know, to participate if asked. Um, and, and that's, you know, there's a couple different ways that that comes about, um, and we can talk about that later. But the, the bottom line up front um, that you need to know is it's hard. <laughs> it is, um, it's hard. It is a pressure cooker uh, for the people who are, you know, so if you think it's hard um, wondering how the board is going and waiting for the results to come out, um, try being the member of the community who owns the individuals who are going up for promotion and who is responsible for representing them to the board um, in the best possible way. It is, uh, you know, it's a lot like being a detailer. You've got people's lives in your hands and, um, and it's some of the hardest work that, uh, that I've done. Um, and they pack a freaking day down there in Millington. So, you know, you show up, I want to say, you know, 7.30-ish, uh, maybe, um, if I'm remembering correctly, maybe 8. Um, and, um, and you don't go back, um, you know, to your little cubbyhole to sleep until, um, until well after dinner. Uh, they, they work you yeah, right through the entire day. Um, and, and you need every second of the time that, that it takes to get into people's records, to understand all the specifics of the individuals that you're briefing, to resolve in your own mind, um, you know, how you're going to brief the, the body of the public affairs community that you're presenting to the board. Uh, and the folks that you're briefing to are, you know, are no pushovers. Um, they're operators, um, they're senior operators, and depending on what board you have, uh, you know, there may be multiple admirals in the room. Um, they ask hard questions. They're very smart. They have communities that they belong to themselves. They've been through countless boards themselves. And so uh, you truly have to be uh, an expert and you, you have to really reach inside to, uh, um, to, to do the absolute best performance that you can on that stage, um, which is, uh, you know, which is the tank and the tank is where all the voting goes on. So, um, so all that to say, I just kind of wanted to set that stage with, with what a board is all of, uh, you know, what the kind of feel for, um, one of the hardest things about the board, oh, by the way, is getting to freaking, uh, the base <laughs> because when you fly in, um, more often than not, they want you to, you know, you may not rate a rental car, and so you got to take this shuttle, and the shuttle takes forever. And so, anyway, all kidding aside, um, it is kind of a pain in the butt to get there. Let's take it away, Teresa, wherever you want now. Thank you, Captain Miller. Uh, first off, I do see a CD on the call. Is that Charlie Dre? I just want to make sure. That all is right. me. Um, all right. Hey, sir. I uh, had audio problems earlier, so I had to get out and get back in. So I missed the first few minutes of the call. So I do apologize for that, sir. But thank you so much for taking the time to talk with everybody. Yeah, no worries. It, the first couple minutes were brilliant. It's all downhill from there. So, um, but I do, I do like your, I like your moon roof, Charlie. All right, let's go. All right. Thanks, so I'm going to start with just a few questions, and I only have a few because, again, just like Captain Miller, I don't want to waste anybody's time. As you guys saw in the first call we did, if you were on there, um, I was in and out in a half hour back when uh, I had the free account. So now, even though that I have the paid account, I still don't believe in wasting anybody's uh, time. So we will get into just a few questions I had, and then we're going to turn it over to you guys for your questions about what your uh, 
pressing issues are about selection boards and things that uh, you can't just readily find out uh, online and through the research. So uh, you sort of walked us through the board process, but I'd like to know sort of, you know, what your role was and uh, how, how long this process takes. Uh, so just kind of an overview of the day to day. Okay. All right. So uh, I guess first things first, the, there's a couple different roles that you can play. Um, one that I have never played is called the recorder, and it is the longest role. Jody, you've been a recorder. Can you talk about that super quick? Yes, so the recorder comes in before the board members. Uh, the recorder is doing the preliminary scrub of the records. So and in that role, you are not looking at PAO records. You're looking at whomever's records the folks in Millington pass you. What you're looking at for that are any holes, um, you know, you're you're pulling things over for the board members to make sure that, you know, it's the first and initial review um, of the record. Um, you know, and then you're you're letting the folks know who run the boards, who's PERS eight, um, if there are any hiccups, any issues. You're scrolling through the letters of the board, inserting letters of the board information in for the recorder or for the members, basically doing all the pre work. So when the members get in. They start opening records and and things are ready for them to start their review. Okay, uh, out here. Yep, and and how were you selected for that, Judy? Um, so I was selected for that. Uh, I was in Millington, so it was convenient. I was the MPC PAO at the time. Um, I and then they. You know, just as the board members, uh, the recorders are selected, the names are forwarded up to PERS 8 for consideration. Um, to be eligible for a recorder, you cannot be in zone or above zone for that board. So I was a brand new 05. Um, so I was a recorder for the 06 board um, to where it was with Captain Miller and Captain James were my board members. Um, so you cannot be an eligible, you cannot um, also be married or uh, to an eligible that's in zone as well. So same rules as those board members that come in as well. Okay, great. Yeah, thanks for, thanks for saying that. So, so just to cap that off, um, if, it wasn't, if it wasn't already clear. So if you're selected to be a recorder, it takes um probably at least twice the amount of time if not more um than it does to be a member of the board so if you're chosen to be a recorder you show up early in millington you uh do exactly what jody was just describing um maybe it takes you a week to do that um uh, along with all of the other recorders who are there and um and then you know the uh for the members like she said in that particular case where um that she just cited it was myself and and uh darren james um so when we showed up we didn't know who was going to be there at the board right so we showed up and um and it was like a little mini pao reunion um before you get to some hard work and you know i was like oh wow you know you're on this board and you know i know for my last board that i said it was mike kafka um, who was there. And so it's always exciting to kind of see who your, who your fellow member is going to be. And it's also very exciting to see who the recorder is because that's the other PAO who's there. There's kind of three of you um, and uh, that are the mini team as you head into the board. So my role um, has always been that of a member on the, on the statutory boards. By statutory, I mean all the ones um, governed by law, which are all of the, you know, 040506, you know, boards. So I, uh, I was always a member and, um, and, and just to go into that a little bit further. So when you, um, when you show up as a member, um, and I'm not sure if this leads into some of your other questions, Teresa. So I'm gonna I'm gonna pause on going through kind of the, de the details of what you do. Um, but I will just say that um, between you and the other member who are there representing the public affairs community, um, one of you is senior, and normally whomever it is that's senior will present um, the public affairs slide. Um, you know, like the the community value slide that Jody was talking about, someone will present the public affairs community to the board. 
and basically explain uh, what our values are and um, what we are looking for in those who would be selected for promotion to uh, to whatever board you're sitting on. And um, and so that's always been my role. I get in, meet meet my uh, counterparts, sit down, and at that point, I start going through all the records myself, um, along with whoever the fellow member is. The recorder is always there to answer the gazillion questions that we come up with um, along the way. If it looks like there's something odd in a record that doesn't quite make sense to us, or something missing, um, or something wrong, uh, you know, we'll bring that up to the recorder. The um, so I've always been a member on statutory boards. On the other boards that I've sat, my positions have varied. Um, I've I've either been a member um, on the administrative boards or I've been the president. Um, and uh, everything from POCR to OCS, DCO, um, lat transfer, milestone screening. Um, so my my positions have varied on on all those boards. Back to you, Teresa. Thank you, Captain Miller. Uh, yeah, that's a lot of experience and a lot of different uh, varied roles on the board process. Um, and I do want to point out that if you want to be a recorder, uh, you contact Chris Bishop. Aaron Cake will put that out in the uh, email that he sent out for the October mentoring uh, email. So send him a note, check with your chain of command, uh, find out when the dates are. And uh, I think it's an amazing opportunity. I wish I I had an opportunity to be a recorder. I think I would have learned a lot, but uh, hopefully this call can help clear up some of the questions people have. So my, my next question is, uh, and, and, I, and I think this gets asked a lot, is what are some of the most important aspects that the board considers when deciding who, who to select? What, what, what would you say if you had to narrow it down to the top things that you guys were looking for? Okay. Um, so, so before I hit that, let me just um, back up one step and foot stomp what you said. If you want to be a recorder or if you are, um, uh, if, if you're in a position where you can be a member uh, like Chris Bishop now. So um, former Lieutenant Commander Bishop, former uh, junior detailer um, Bishop is the one who is in charge of planning. And, uh, and scheduling the public affairs community's support um, to its boards. So um, you can always tell your detailer too, you know, cause they're all sitting there right there together. But um, um, there was one other thing on the recorder that I wanted to say, and I just can't remember what the heck it was, right? Oh yeah. Um, so the best part about being a recorder, if it's something that you have an opportunity to do is you basically get to see everything uh, you know, you, you get to see um, the whole board process play out and you don't have the, the pressure and the responsibilities of the board members. Um, so and you get to be in the room, you get to be in the tank, you get to, you know, be involved in answering questions about the records I and mean, you get the whole deal. Um, and, and, it, and yet you don't carry that, that ultimate responsibility of being the person standing up before the, the admirals in the tank and presenting the board. So, um, okay. So, what do the boards look you know, for the most? I'm not gonna spend too much time on this because honestly, I think we'll be talking a lot about specifics um, as this call goes on. But you know, the bottom line up front is this. Um, they're looking at a couple documents for guidance. One is um, the board precepts. So the board precepts, which are signed by Secretary of Navy, if I remember correctly, um, pretty much lay out, you know, these are the rules of the board and these are the things that the board will consider um, and these are the things that um, that should not be considered. And and depending on, you know, you might think that that, that doesn't vary much, but it does uh, vary because time changes and different things become important um, to us or different things are flagged for us as uh, a Navy that we need to be paying attention to. Um, but, uh, the, uh, the precepts are the governing guidance for the selection board and they, uh, you know, it wouldn't be atypical in the past, for instance, just as an example for them to say, you know, you will give consideration to someone who has done an IA in support of, you know, Operation during freedom, or or Operation you know Iraqi freedom, or whatever whatever the you know infinite resolve, or you know so it's 
um, uh, those are some of the things that are in the precepts that are germane crossinating. Um, second thing that the board is relying on is the community slide. And Jody referred to this. And so the community slide, which is, you know, you could you can get a copy. I'm, I'm sure that it's on our, um, you know, on our shared portal. Um, but the the community slide is what the community is telling the board is important to us. So um, and and kind of in what pay grades, you know, depending on what board you're sitting on. And so it may say things like, um, you know, grad ed or 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 um, war college or uh, you know a dc tour or um you know forward deployed tour um or uh joint tour or um joint education other than war you know uh, jpme1 jpme2 or um anyway you get my drift right uh, apr plus m um, so it spells out there for the board what it is, and it looks like looks like someone just posted um, our community brief. Yeah, she just put it in the chat. Jody did. Thanks, Jody. So, so the board relies on that, and they rely on the briefing that they receive from the senior PAO talking about the community values. And so they'll go back to them as as your briefing records. They'll be like, well, hey, wait a minute. You said that, you know, you all valued this, but they don't have that. Uh, so how does that stack up um, or how did that happen? Or, um, you know, they'll ask specific questions that are a result of them trying to. Um, to encapsulate, I guess, in their mind, um, what's important for the public affairs community and um, and where they see it, they're kind of making little mental checks um, in their minds and where they don't see it, they'll usually ask a question. Um, so, so those are the two guiding documents. And then I guess the last thing that I would say is, you know, they're looking for surprise, surprise, spoiler alert, sustained superior performance, right? So they are looking for, uh, you know, the records that are and I don't want to use terminology here that, that folks don't understand, but the records that are immediately um, rise to the top and are identified as uh, what we call PAC plus um, records that, that usually are automatically voted and never even have to go to a tank, um, but, but uh, voted as, uh, as to be selected. Um, those records are the ones that you can go through. And as you're going through them, you're like, Yep. Okay. So let's see. They said that, you know, X, Y, Z, P, D, Q were all of the values, things that they valued in the community. These people have all of them and their fit reps are all indications from every commander that they are, um, you know, either through breakouts or through a comparison against RISCA or through confidence comments about you know promotion promotability, um, they they're all ones that that people are just nodding their heads. So when you see records like that, they're rarely briefed. Um, I don't know. They're rarely briefed for more than fifteen seconds, um, because as you start briefing, everybody's looking up. They're hearing the pieces. Uh, you know, they're, they're making the mental checks in their mind of the things that the community said that they valued because the briefer is pointing them out. And then when the briefer hits the, uh, the portion of the, I think it's the um, PSR or the OSR, whichever one has all the grades on it, they can see that all of their trends were increasing, that, that you know, they were above RISCA, that they had comments like, you know, number two of 48 or number one of 10 or whatever the case may be. And bam, they hit 100, and and you're on to the next record immediately. So you, at that point, wherever you are in your brief, you stop briefing. You could be mid, and you just next record is, and you start briefing the next record um, because they don't they don't have time to hear anything else. Um, so I think I've talked a little bit there about what the board values, and I know we'll be getting more into that. But back to you for more questions, Teresa. Yes, um, I have uh, really just two more. Um, I'm going to ask you uh, what part of the board surprised you and why, 
And then I just, there's only one specific I want you to hone in on and that's soft breakouts. Cause some people give them and some people don't. And I'm curious at how the operators see that. Yeah, okay. Um, let me hit that one first. Let's come back to what surprised me um, because I think there's probably been, you know, different surprises on different boards. Um, so, so um, soft breakouts. Um, the you know the bottom line up front, I guess, is this. And if you if you read the the mentoring sheet that I put together, um, then I'll I'll just be kind of repeating here a little bit what I said there. Um, you know, your your record is gonna speak for itself. Um, you know, it doesn't doesn't necessarily require um, hard or soft breakouts at all. Um, you know, if, if you have a solid fit rep um, and it's above RISCA and, you know, you're an EP um, and especially if you're, you know, if you're ranked um, uh, against other people in that, in that, in that summary group, um, it's going to be obvious. Um, I don't know, you know, it's kind of goes against convention um, that if you were ranked, let's say, um, you know, if you were ranked against a bunch of lieutenants or lieutenant commanders or commanders, wherever the case may be, um, and, you know, you got an EP um, or an MP, um, it says something, right? I mean, it kind of says where you are in that pack. And I don't know who is is opposed to saying you know what that number is like if you're the number one person um i don't know why they wouldn't say it but if they're absolutely opposed to it um you know obviously there's nothing you can do about it and the you know, it kind of goes to one of the points that i really wanted to make to this group today which is um you know the most of the fit reps that I rode, and I'm not sure if you all have had these experience uh, experiences, but um, you know, and it, it's a double-edged sword. Most of the fit reps I've written haven't been changed at all. So I write it up, and I give it to the boss, and the boss is, you know, an aviator or a SWO or a submarine career, you know, career operator, and you know, they don't really know what the right things to say for the PR necessarily, and they don't necessarily know, and so. Um, so one of the things that um, that you want to do is make sure that you write yourself the right fit rep. Make sure that you are, um, you know, give yourself a breakout. And if you didn't, you know, if you don't think that you're going to get a hard breakout, like, you know, number one of 10 or number two of 40 or whatever the case may be, write what it is that you feel is as true as you can. Like, um, you know, the, you know, one of the best PAOs I've ever worked for, you know, worked with, or, um, you know, one of the best full fours that I've had work for me, uh, across all designators, um, you know, something like that. The, um, those are softer breakouts, but, but they will, they will, and, and it's not, it's not a foolproof process, but they will be pulled out and, um, you know, written on the side of the records that the board members are looking up at it. Um, not every time, but I tell you what, every time I have like a number one or a number two, or maybe it's like number three of 70, I, I don't know. I mean, it's not an exact science, but anything I have something that shows that this individual broke out as the member, board member, I write it off to the side so that the entire board sees it and I'll hit it as I go along. And where you see, again, these top records that just soar through the board, it's frequently when you see multiple of those in a row from subsequent commanders, you know? Oh, well here you can see he was, you know, you know, whatever. Number five of, of 25 went up to number three when he departed, next commander, you know, said he was number one and, and, and you know, Two tours after that, maybe you've got another comment, and they look up there, and what they see is, wow, this person is a bit of a superstar. Um, now, so back to why, back to what I think you can do uh, about trying to 
ensure that your, uh, that your high performance is called out before the board. One is write yourself the right fit rep. Um, and if you don't know how, ask a mentor. And, you know, or if you don't know how, take a look at that one pager I wrote, short and sweet. Um, you know, what matters uh, is clearly stated in there. And, uh, you know, I don't want to take up a lot of time on the call today talking about it. Second thing, and, and probably more important, is know your commander, you know, and establish a strong relationship with your commander. Um, perform for your commander. And, you know, so my, my brother used to say, and if you're, if you're a friend of mine or maybe used to work for me, you've probably heard me say this before, you know, uh, the, uh, know who your boss is. Know what your boss wants. Give your boss what your boss wants, right? So my brother used to tell me, hey, you know, you want to succeed in the Navy? Do that. And uh, so, you know, I don't know if that's golden advice, but it's advice that I always took to heart. And, uh, you know, you're going to have bosses that you get along with. And you're going to have bosses that you think you're going to get fired every day. Um, all you can do is try to know them, try to um, understand how to work with them um, and perform, you know, do your absolute best. And that's probably, I know that sounds so trite and simple, but relationships, uh, you know, between PAOs and their bosses, um, I think, you know, I'll speak in a somewhat biased way, in the public affairs community, we usually do a pretty good job of mastering that art. Um, it's difficult. It requires communication. It requires um, tactfulness. It requires um, being on your toes, it requires no kidding, the, cap the capability to perform. Um, and, uh, but the ones of us who do it the best, um, you know who they are because their bosses love them and they want to take them wherever they go because they just so intuitively work well together uh, and they have this great relationship. Um, on, and occasions, and I've, I've had these where you've had, you know, I've no kidding gone into a fit rep debrief with a boss. Um, and I'll say it, it was during my carrier tour, right? So um, big, big breakout job. Um, and it was the second CO that I had. And I went in and I was sure that, you know, this was going to be one of those storied moments where uh, my CO was going to um, give me a, a lousy fit rep uh, and that it was going to, you know, impact my career from that point forward um, because this guy and I were butt heads an awful lot. Um, and, uh, you know, it took everything that I had to, you know, to, to just, you know, be the person that I needed to be uh, to, you know, to always, you know, try to perform and to stay humble and, you know, not, take things too personally and, you know, protect my team, um, and, uh, and get the mission done. And, and sure enough, that was enough. Cause when I sat down, um, he still, I don't think liked me. Um, and I definitely did not like him. Um, but he gave me the fit rep that I needed and, um, and it recognized the performance that, that I had delivered. So, um, so anyway, I, I think I'm rambling a little bit right now, but I think those are, three important or four important things, right? There are governing documents that the board is using to guide them, um, you know, and, and then, you know, when you write your fit rep for your boss, um, you want it to, you want it to be a fit rep that if he just signs it and turns it back around to you, you're like, oh shoot, I thought he was going to put a breakout in there. Gosh, darn it. Why didn't I do it? He literally gave it back to me word for word. Well, don't do that. You know, write it write it the way it needs to be um, spoken to the board to represent you. Um, and don't be mad if you, if you get something else different back that is less than what you handed in, well, that's, that's part of probably your counseling. Um, if you got something back that was more than what you handed in, then that just shows that your boss you know, thinks you walk on water. And if you got back what you handed in, then be glad that you wrote it the right way. Um, and then you know, really work on that relationship because, you know, and it's not just with the boss, you know, sometimes it's with, 
you know, there's there's equally critical relationships with the deputy or the chief of staff or you know the executive director or the rest of the staff or you know certainly you know all of those folks are folks that you have to work very closely with but um at any rate that's what i've got next question all right sir thank you so much uh i i will just add two two other things to that and that is number one uh, i always hope at least that they understand the importance of midterm counseling and that is an opportunity to build that rapport with your boss and use that for an opportunity to ask if you are in any doubt of where you stand um, just to say, hey, ballpark figure uh, where you may want to even raise the question there. It's a, it's a judgment call one way or the other, but uh, it can be an opportunity uh, to ask that question. And then number two, yeah. um, one thing I struggled with was uh, comparing myself to an operator. I thought, well, God, I'm just a PAO. I, I can't rank with the operators. Well, don't even look at it like that. Look at it like how you are as a PAO. Um, you're supporting the operators and your role is just as important. So that was something I, I personally had to get over and struggle with when I was writing that soft breakout. So great advice yeah. on both fronts. One last point too, when it comes to, you know, the sitting down and getting doing your debrief. And if you see something, um, you know, God, this sounds really bad, right? So if you see something, say something, right? So if you see, if you get a fit rep and let's say, you know, you're getting your consecutive fit rep from a, uh, CEO, commander, whoever it may be. And the first one, you, you had a uh, 4.33 or whatever. And uh, actually, let's use numbers that I know. So let's say the first one, you got a 4.5 on your fit rep. And your next one, you got a 4.33. And it dropped you a grade. Ask the question, right? Because it's happened to me before. Um, it happened to me when I was at Submarine Group 2. And uh, I had an admiral. Um, it was actually Admiral Mike Tracy and, uh, he'd written a fit rep on me. And, um, of course I had drafted both my fit reps in these cases, right? So I drafted my second fit rep, I sent it in and got my, you know, fit rep back for debrief and he had lowered a grade. And so I, I, you know, just as politely as I could asked him, I said, sir, you know, this indicates a decline in my performance and, um, you know, I wouldn't have anticipated that and, you know, Clearly here, you know, you dropped me from a, a five to a, a four or whatever the case was. And, um, you know, just respectfully request some feedback on that particular item. He had no idea, right? The staff had written the, the grades in, they'd messed it up, they weren't paying attention. And, um, and so he was like, whoa, yeah, hey, that's wrong. I uh, didn't mean to do that, Scott. Um, here, why don't you just go ahead and give me that, but, you know, XO or yay, you know, take care of this, please. So ask the question. Um, don't just roll with it. Um, I mean, you have to be tactful, right? It's all part of that relationship, but they make mistakes too. Staffs make mistakes, bosses make mistakes. So, um, you know, if you see something that you don't believe is accurately reflecting your, your performance, um, ask a question. Thank you, sir. All right, those are all my questions. I'll, I'll probably close with what surprised you and why about the process if we have time. But again, in the interest of not taking up anyone's time, I want to hand the floor to all of our participants. Uh, we have 14 others on this call besides us two, and uh, we're very honored that you guys all took the time to join us. So over to you to either ask through the phone, through chat, or however you want to do it. If you guys want to get on camera, please feel free to get on camera. If you don't, you don't. Uh, but uh, thank you all for joining us and over to you for your questions. How do, do we raise a hand? How does this work? Um, I got you. Just go ahead, Seth. Just go ahead. Uh, I've got a slew of questions and I'll sort of pour them all out there. And I don't know, maybe if other people want to like skip some of them and jump in as well. Um, so my questions are, um, given that they're given precepts and other guidance about uh, what the PA community values, do the operators on the board value certain things on top of that? And is there a way to increase your chances by showing value in a different way to operators than you would to a PA professional? My next question is, is concurrent fit reps, are they valuable? How valuable? Are they seen as positive or redundant? Um, um, and I guess... I guess my last question is, is um, given that fit reps are intentionally written quite favorably, um, short of some really obvious bad actors, um, 
how does how do board members, especially those who are not in the PA community who are rating uh, public affairs officers, recognize sort of um, performance versus fluff? Or is there a way? What what does a bad fit rep look like? Okay, cool. All right, I'll hit all three of those. I'm going to try to go rapid fire on these because I'm sure lots of people on any one note here um, from Jody. I think she's punched out, but she had me, uh, she's got something she wanted me to mention. So um, I'm going to answer your question, Seth, and then I'm going to hit, hit that. Um, so first things first, uh, let's hit the concurrent fit reps piece. Um, so I put this in my mentoring memo. Bottom line up front, concurrent fit reps help if they're good. Right. So, so it's kind of a bit of a gut check, I think, and a, a roll of the dice in some ways. Um, I will tell you that since I've just been CEO here, um, I've been um, pleasantly surprised and very proud to have Commodores and others, captains, contacting me and saying, hey, Scott, I want to write a concurrent fit rep on your boy or your gal because they are just the best thing since sliced bread. And so absolute no-brainer there. You know uh, first of all, um, if they want to do it, I think they're going to do it. I don't necessarily even think they have to ask your permission. Um, but if you got someone who wants to write one on you, then arguably, arguably it's going to be good. And um, and uh, you know, in those cases, it's um, it's in, it's usually like a nice one-two punch. I mean, if you're performing well, for instance, on the carrier, if you're performing well for you know the strike group admiral, arguably you're probably performing well for the CO too. So you wind up getting you know a, a strong fit rep or something appropriate from the CO, and then and then you kind of got like coming off the top rope from you know the strike group commander with a concurrent fit rep. It can be very nice. Um, now. Those are, the, the first case I just mentioned is someone who comes to you and says, I want to write one on you. Um, so that wasn't the case, you know, when I was uh, in positions to get concurrent fit reps. Um, and so I would write one up. And um, if I thought, and again, this is important, if you think that you have performed well, and if you think you have a good relationship, and if you believe that you have a good standing um, in that in individual's mind, um, I don't think it's really that much of a risk to say, "Hey, sir or ma'am, um, you know, respectfully request your consideration of a of a concurrent fit rep." And and you know, and then I usually would add, um, you know, if that's not something that you think that you um, you know would want to provide, then um, you know, then you know, thank you for the consideration, right? So you basically have told them, hey, if you want to help me out with something, um, you know, that recognizes my performance in a positive way, then then I've written it here for your consideration. But if you don't, then just let me know now, um, because, you know, what you don't want to do is get a concurrent fit rep that does not show um, positively before the board, right? Um, so there's that. Second thing, Fit reps. Um, actually, let's hit the first one. Precepts, guidance. What else do they value? How do you speak to the to the operators? Um, I don't know. I mean, I think you know, I I was an operator too, right? M many of us were. Um, so you know, I think that uh, um, you know they they in many cases recognize as quickly as we do what. Um, what key positions are and what performance looks like in those positions. So, you know, it's very obviously um, obvious to, to, you know, to any flavor of operator. If you're, if you're out there and you've got a seagoing billet or you are, uh, you know, working on a numbered fleet staff or you're working, um, you know, in at a headquarters level, uh, you know, in the fleet or in the Pentagon, um, you know, all of those things are very readily, readily recognizable. And so, um, so those things naturally resonate with them. I would tell you that the things that I felt like I need to define a little bit better, um, for board members would be, um, the not so obvious jobs in our community. Um, 
and you know they'll they'll come up occasionally um for instance you know they might ask about hey what about you know this person that's working at dma um you know how does that measure up um you know it's a dc tour but um you know how does that fall in the context of your precepts or um, how about this word person that's working at the schoolhouse um, or how about this person who is um, you know the Navy War College PAO or something like that so there may be ones that are out there that that aren't as obvious to them positions that we're in that need a little bit of context um, and so those are the ones that I would tell you um, you know, I found myself explaining in the past um, a little bit more, not kind of the obvious uh, tours. So I'm not sure if that answers your question, Seth, but and let me hit the last one, fit reps. Um, so positive comments, yeah. So, um, you know, I, I won't add anything more, I think, than I did to my, um, the mentoring paper that I wrote. And I, can, I know I keep referring to it, um, but I know it's out there and, um, and I think you provided it in the lead up to this meeting, um, Teresa. So if, if you haven't read it, um, check that out. But RISCA, right? So you know where where you are with respect to RISCA and whether your trend is increasing or decreasing. Those are the things that speak to um, board members other than language. They want to know whether or not you um, are below, at, or above RISCA and whether in consecutive fit reps, you've moved up or down or just stayed the same, um, those things all speak to the board. And uh, yeah, I'll leave it at that. Next questions. Okay, I saw that uh, Commander Cook was your hand raised. I think I saw that. Uh, so I, I'll go to you next. Yes, it was. Can you hear me, Teresa? I can hear you, guys. I hear you perfectly. Hey, XO. Hey. I actually have two questions. Um, so for the benefit of the group, can you talk about letters to the board? When, if at all, are they appropriate? That's my first yeah. question. Okay. So again, you know, reference what I wrote before, but, um, you know, I, I have to be, I, I'm going to be brutally honest here. Um, and I think I was in, in, in my one page here. Your record is going to speak for itself. Period. So it's a good record, it's gonna speak for itself. It's a good record, arguably, you don't need a letter to the board for any reason. Um, it's not like uh, you need to, um, you know, come over the top with description uh, in a letter to the board that tells you, tells them what they're already gonna know. Um, nor do you need letters of endorsement. Um, I, I would, I would, I can tell you, and I, I truly believe that um, uh, a person who has a good record, I, you know, I don't think that they ever need a letter of endorsement, um, period. Until, you know, the only exception to this that I would say is um, our, you know, flag board. So I usually see O6s who are intent on um, competing for Chinfo, get letters from the uh, you know the sea daddies and sea mommies they've had uh, you know going back. So uh, not unusual for to see letters from SecNav, CNO, you know fleet commanders, etc. Um, and and that kind of makes sense in a way because it's um, it's a very unique and a very unique board, um, and and they're always positive too, right? So that's the other thing I would say. So next um, on the letters, what if you what if you don't have a perfect record? Well, I guess the question is, are there things missing from your record? Are there errors? Are there things that you need to be specifically um, um, uh, correcting uh, or submitting to the board because they're you know they're omissions? That's a great reason to write the, a letter to the board. Um, what is a very risky letter to the board is trying to, in your own words, explain away what will, you know, what could be seen by the board as less than less than perfect performance or a decline in performance. 
Um, it's risky because very often, uh, you know, so first thing is you, ha you have a letter that goes into the board. It's the very first thing that's read to the board. Um, so you person's record comes up and it says letter to the board and it's usually highlighted or it's bolded or something. And, and the very first thing that I as a briefer have to do is explain that letter to the board. And so um, if it's a letter from the individual, very often I would say, despite um, the talent that we have in the public affairs community, it comes across as um, very defensive. Sometimes it, it highlights things for the board that frankly you just don't need to be highlighting. Um, you know, if you feel insecure about uh, your trend of performance or fit reps or, or, you know, inability to achieve X, Y, Z, when you say, you know, the reason I didn't achieve X, Y, Z is because I was in hospital for six months or something like that. And they're like, oh, wow, geez, yeah, this person, I didn't even notice that this person doesn't have X, Y, or Z. Oh, well, that's easy. Click, you know, so it's, it, it can backfire on you very quickly. Um, in my humble opinion, if there is something in your record that implies a, a negative trend or something that is less than perfect, um, the only letter that really matters to the board is from the person who wrote that fit rep. So if that person who wrote that fit rep says, hey, you know what? Um, I was, uh, I didn't have any time to get to know, um, you know, Commander Cook. Um, now in my job as, you know, whatever commander, I've, I've had an opportunity to continue to watch Kate over the years. And she is in fact, an absolute superstar. And, you know, she was under some tough competition there. Um, it was a short fit rep. And uh, you know, if I had to do it over again, I'd give her a straight up five Oh, number one of 20 or whatever. You know what I mean? That will make a difference. Um, so what else on the letters, Kate, like what have I missed there in that context that you were looking for or that others are looking for? Um, that's what I was looking for on letter, sir. I don't know if anyone else had an additional question kind of on that subject. Um, if not, I do have a, a second question. Yeah. Letters to the board. Very yeah. risky. Very risky. All right. We're going to close out on that question unless anyone else has any other questions on it. All right. Over to you, Kate. Okay, sir. So my next question again, for the benefit of the group, let's say you're in zone for promotion. Um, when you talk about precepts, you're going in uh, to the board, you have um, good paper at or above RISCA, you have your APR, you have your grad ed, you have JPME, maybe you have milestone, depending what board it is, um, and you don't get promoted. And you see someone else who maybe doesn't have these things, all of these things, um, get selected for a promotion. And maybe that person is above zone, in zone, below zone, or very, very below zone. Um, what would you say to someone who's trying to make sense of that um, in the event that they're feeling discouraged? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I would just say, shake it off. Um, you know, you, and uh, keep your head down, keep performing. Um, it happens. So, I mean, I can cite so many examples. I know that you guys can too, um, where you've seen folks who um, were, uh, maybe your, maybe, you know, maybe wrong choice of word here, maybe your idol in the community, or maybe your mentor in the community, or maybe your friend, or, uh, you know, whatever the case may be, and you see them um, passed over, or maybe it happened to you. Um, and, you know, if, if, not just using the context that you painted, Kate. If there's no real great reason for it, and maybe they went below zone, um, the the simple fact is it happens, and um, you know there's there's no exact rhyme or reason to it, um, but I'll I'll tell you a little bit how it can happen, um, and then I would tell you if it happened to you. Just keep performing. And the bottom line is, if you get if you get passed over, you just gotta bear down. Um, I know it hurts, and uh, the um, you know it's in the big scheme of things, 
it's it's just another year. And in the big scheme of things, if you're going to stay in the Navy and that's what your goal is and you want to be, you know, a professional PAO and you want to be considered, continue to be considered to make promotion and, and to be a leader in our community, it doesn't matter. It's just another year. It's another year that you were going to serve anyway. Um, so just shake it off. It happens. Bear down um, and perform. Keep performing. All right. So, so that's that part. Now, here's, here's how it can happen, right? Um, and I, so I've, you know, I would lie if I said that I hadn't been um, in a board where I've seen it happen. Um, and so, again, there's no exact rhyme or reason, but here's how the mechanics of it can happen. All right. So, um, and it kind of gets to something that we really didn't talk about. So the board's broken up into a couple different sections. You know, the very first part of the board is where um, you're reviewing records as a um, as a member of the board. You're going through records, and all the board members have this little toggle in their hand, and the toggle has um, different buttons on it: zero, twenty-five, fifty, seventy-five, a hundred. So when you see press one hundred on your fit rep, there's a reason for that. <laughs> Press 100 means 100% confidence this person can get promoted or should be selected. Um, and so the board members are listening to your brief or they're listening to your record be briefed, how about that? And as soon as they've got a level of confidence that measures up to 100 down to zero, they push it. Like I said, some records go very quickly if they're if they're, you know, if they're obvious, um, you know, rock star records, they get pressed 100 very quickly. And, and after all of the records are briefed, they do what's called the scattergram. And the scattergram is basically the, the tabulated results up on a screen. And it shows, um, it does not have names. It just shows by number, um, how many you know people you had at the varying percentages based on the voting of confidence so you may have someone that was up there in the 90s you may have someone who's in the 50s um and what the board will do is knowing how big the zone is let's say the zone is eight or something like that and they uh they they're looking at the scattergram and there's a very clean break kind of between maybe oh i don't know maybe around you know, 95%, 94, 92, 91, 90, 87, and then there's a big gap. And then all of a sudden it picks up again in the very next record that, that was rated or that was um, um, voted on is in the 70s. So let's say there's maybe four records that, that were 87 and above. Someone in the board will say, you know, Mr. or Madam President, I vote, or, you know, I... Uh, forget what the right terminology is, but I vote that we um, take all records at 87% and above and, um, and that those are going to be selected for promotion, you know, subject to something else, anything else that, that could remove one of them. And then, and then the members will say yay or nay. And, um, and, it, and after that happens, the you know, they may have some subsequent voting that, that moves people into that pack plus area, but, but if they don't, everybody else winds up in what's called the crunch. Um, and when, um, when the crunch is a whole separate briefing of your record and a whole separate voting process. And so, um, so when you get to the point where the board's done everything it can to, oh, and they may say, for instance, and we vote that all records of, you know, 60% and below are um, ineligible for selection. And so maybe that leaves them like eight records that are left that were between that lower percentage and, you know, 86, right? And so, so of those eight records, um, they will be crunched. There will be another board process for them at, at a future hour, not at that point in time. Um, and uh, the, um, the members of the board go back and, and we swap records. So records that I briefed, Darren James um, will now brief. D records that Darren James briefed, I will now brief. And, and, but it's just those eight. And so, um, 
and you know that you've got four slots. So you're working really hard to make sure that, that, that those records were briefed correctly and that you understand what the differences are between those eight records, because you have to try to help the board decide how to pick four out of those eight. And, um, and then you go, you go back in and, and those boards are rebriefed again by the other member of the board. Um, they are revoted on again. Um, okay, so after that point, um, there is an opportunity to look at records below zone. All right, so here's where I'm gonna finally answer this question. So, you have just been working in the kind of middle performance range with this crunch, right? Because, because the top performers were already pushed off to the side and, and basically selected the first four. So you've been working in the middle zone um, where you, know, you may still have very strong performers or you may have less than strong performers. And as soon as you start giving the board briefs, very brief, um, descriptions on records below zone what do you think is waiting below zone the very top performers for the next year so now you've got an opportunity potentially where you have someone no matter how you know far you go below zone who is a pack plus you know a plus plus record um who is you know killing it um and and this wasn't the year that they were supposed to be looked at but you know the crunch was a little bit less than impressive before the board and so um or they were just so impressed by the you know the, the this individual below zone that they get pulled up and selected that year so so um you know i've i've always uh you know, I've always thought that I had what I needed um, within our own community zone and above zone to fill out the um, the numbers that we were going to gain each year. And I did my very best to kind of brief the records um, to to exemplify that to the board. Um, I've never really I've never felt we had to go below zone um, because we didn't have the talent. I've never felt that way. But occasionally when the board is looking below zone, they'll see somebody that blows them away. And in no surprise, because during the board the next year, that person was probably going to be at 100 and everybody's going to hit 100 in like the first 10 seconds of briefing their record. And they would have been a pack plus player. Well, now they're being compared against the crunch in this year's board. Um, so that's how it can happen. Um, and what I would say is, you know, while it may not necessarily be deserved uh, or required, and, and while it may hurt people's feelings, um, you just kind of got to chalk it up as it can happen. Um, and more often than not, the person that is selected below zone, you know, they were going to get selected the next year anyway. Um, and, uh, you know, it's not really fair, uh, but it can happen. I hope that explains it. I know that's kind of less than perfect, but but that's how it can happen mechanically. Now that's a that's a fascinating explanation of the process and something uh, I know I personally didn't know, and I'm sure a lot of other people on the call didn't understand the whole crunch and then pulling that person from the below zone area and how that might work. And then the other piece to this, in my mind, I loved your first point, which is that life is not fair. We we can we can we can, we can go around in circles about you know how life isn't fair, and sometimes you just have to accept that. You just do your best, and that's the only thing you, one has control over. Um, so we're getting at the top of the hour. In fact, we're a little bit past the hour, but I, I don't want to stifle questions. So I'm just going to kind of go around very quickly uh, and maybe do one last question. And then uh, once we have one last question, I'll turn it over back to you, sir, to, to close this one out. Um, does anyone have any other questions that weren't already covered? All right, going once, going twice. All right, uh, Commander Dre, do you have anything else that you wanted to add? Um, hey, thanks. Thanks, Teresa. Um, 
Hey, Captain Miller, sir, just wanted to once again just say thanks for, for, for taking the time to go over everything with everyone. This was very, um, very good information um, and uh, just really appreciate you kind of deep diving and, and covering the intricacies that, that makes the board process. Um, the other thing I'd say for everybody else is just, um, you know, you've got your, you get your fit rep debrief, you have your midterm feedback, but don't let that be the only times that you're, you're working with your, with your commander and, and with, uh, with folks that are rating you. Um, if you're doing that coordination and you're having those conversations then you're not going to be surprised on things. So just make sure you're always doing that. Um, and then, um, you know, last thing is, uh, uh, Teresa, thanks for setting this up. And I hope everyone's enjoying uh, the, the regional mentorship things that we're doing. Um, I think the Zoom call is great and um, just really appreciate everyone's participation. Sir, and once again, thank you so much for uh, taking the time to talk with everybody today. Thank you so much, Commander Dre. And Captain Miller, do you have any closing thoughts before I just close out with a few admin notes and then what we're uh, planning for January? Um, yeah, just one thing that occurred to me, which is, you know, going back to the kind of the letters of the board, a letter to the board question that, uh, that Kate Cook asked, um, just like your fit rep, okay, so if you're going to ask someone to write a letter to the board, man, you better write it right. Um, so it, it needs to, um, you know, if, there, if you're having a letter submitted to the board, there must be a reason for it, unless you're up for chinfo. And so whatever that reason is, you want to make sure that you help your, um, you know, whoever that endorser is, find their voice in saying it. Um, so don't just, uh, you know, again, much like you wouldn't just hand in a fit rep and hope that they're going to put the right words on it that you didn't write. Um, make sure that it's, that it's, you know, written with the impact um, and is, you know, kind of laser focused on whatever it is that you're trying to, uh, to address with the board. Um, so, okay, all that to say, um, Man, I really enjoyed this last hour. Uh, and if you know me, you know that I am an um, incorrigible talker, um, especially when it comes to mentoring. So, uh, you know, this is the absolute most important thing that I think that, um, that as leaders, we have an opportunity to do. And it's certainly my favorite thing to do. And I would just extend to every single one of you, if you want me uh, to talk to you some more about any of this stuff, don't hesitate to reach out to me. Um, I will tell you this, that despite the fact that I'm a PAO, I am a lousy uh, like pen pal correspondent. So if you wanna to talk to me, best thing you can do is ask if you can uh, darken my doorstep or give me or make a phone call. Um, and uh, you know, much similar to the Zoom um, call that we're doing right now, I will, you know, I will tell you everything that, that's on my mind. Um, so, Please, you know, don't ever hesitate to reach out to me if there's something that you think that I can help you with um, or, or reach out to your mentors. And I think that the, maybe the most important thing that you can do um, if you're wondering what your record is like is have someone look at it for you. Um, the, uh, you know, I'll tell you this, this is kind of funny. I know you guys, heard from Nick Belize during the last session, right? So Nick was one of my mentors. And um, he was in my very first public affairs job. He was the deputy of Nav Info East back when we had like uh, a full full squad there in New York City. And I was just a project officer. And um, and then later on in life, he actually um, had an opportunity to, you know, to, to give me some feedback. Um, and, uh, you know, with respect to my records. And don't hesitate to have someone look. Don't you know? Don't confuse yourself. Um, don't fool yourself. You know, I think it, most people know if you've got a good record, don't worry about it. It's going to speak for itself. Um, but if you're if you're concerned about something or you're wondering how something looks, um, you know, chances are that there might be something there. And you know, have someone look over your records, print them all out, print out your OSR, PSR. I've done it for many people. Um, and, uh, you know, the, 
detailers are experts at that. And, and anybody who has set a board who is, you know, 05 and above should be experts at it. So, um, and, and just be prepared for honesty and whether that is, Hey, your record's shit hot or Hey, you know, Houston, we got a problem right here. You know, back when you were X, Y, Z, um, you know, whether or not they told you they dinged you right here. And this is something that, you know, that the board's going to see whether or not it matters, um, you know, will will play out. But, um, but I really appreciated the opportunity. And I certainly don't uh, think that I'm the smartest kid. On, I'm not, I know I'm not the smartest kid on the block, but I do appreciate the opportunity to share any experience um, that I have with you all. And, um, and I wish y'all the very merriest of holidays. Um, so go out there and be awesome and enjoy your families. Thank you so much, sir. And I want to thank all of you for uh, bearing uh, with us a little bit past the hour, but uh, I think this was time well spent. Uh, we are going to have a recording of this uh, afterwards, so I will uh, get that link out to you guys all through email, as well as uh, I'll send out the uh, paper that Captain Miller sent again out to everyone as well. And then we still do have the recording of what Nick did for a joint task force forming, so I'll include that in the email as well. And then looking ahead to January, uh, I just got confirmation that we are going to do a session on uh, the APR journey, uh, more of the story of getting the qualification, why uh, this particular person got it. Uh, we're gonna have a Lieutenant uh, Mary Kate Walsh as our guest. And she's gonna share a little bit about how to get the APR without going to SDSU, uh, as I did myself. Uh, it's a little bit harder uh, that way, but I think very valuable. And she's just gonna talk about it from a, a personal standpoint, which we think is very important. And then the last thing is if you are uh, wanting to be a mentor or seeking a mentor, uh, please let me know. I did have somebody reach out to me. Uh, I'm waiting on his bio now. He's an aviator who is joining our community and he's currently at Commander uh, Navy Atlantic, uh, Naval Air Forces Atlantic. Uh, so he is sending me a note and uh, I will see about trying to match him up with somebody here uh, to mentor him. He's looking for somebody who has an aviation background as well. So more to follow on that. And with that, I'm gonna go ahead and sign out for the call. Thank you all for joining us. And uh, we hope this uh, mentoring is valuable. Please continue to send your feedback to me if there's anything you wanna see us cover that we haven't covered and you'd like to see in the future. Happy holidays all and see you later.